What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Ni G3 Max. Now this is going to be one of the biggest diode lasers that I will be trying out as this has a fairly large build size, but we'll get all into that in a minute. But let's go ahead, let's get this opened up. Let's see what's inside and let's check this out. All right, so here is everything that it came with, and I actually had to open up a bag to find this tiny little user manual inside of it. And I skimmed through this, and all it really shows on installation is pretty much these two tiny pages, and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here, but that's pretty much it. After that, then you get into German and every other language. So. This is basically what I have to go off of in order to get this assembled. But I'm going to do this off camera because I have no idea how long this is going to take me. But let's jump right in. I'll come right back after that and I'll let you know how that goes. All right, so I got this all put together. And let me just say this was a huge pain in the butt to put this together. Now, the instruction manual is basically nothing it gives you this little picture right here and even if you scan their little qr code to go to it to read the directions it basically is showing you these same exact directions which really does not explain anything whatsoever so this probably took me a good two and a half to three hours to actually put this together and as you can see i still didn't even put it fully together like the drag chain and some of the other pieces but some of this is actually meant for if you have an enclosure box and you want to hook it up and you want to upgrade some of these things down the road, you actually can, same with like the air assist and whatnot. So some of these tools that I have, I just will not need until I actually build something and put down a spoil board underneath. Now I do have the honeycomb bed underneath that they sent me, so that's really nice. But I didn't put the spoil board down and I didn't hook up this drag chain and over here, to try and put this on, it did not fit in these holes. It didn't line up. So, but if it did, it would look something like this. And this would attach to the spoil board. So it would move back and forth. But I didn't bother hooking that up because I don't have a board underneath. So all of these extra pieces and tools they will just get put aside until I actually finish building the whole enclosure and everything else. So this does have a really large engraving area. It is 810 by 460 millimeters. So keep that in mind that you will need a slightly large work area in order to place this machine. So I'll go ahead and I'll get this all hooked up to my computer and I'll download any software that I may need or any firmware updates. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that. And right after that, we'll get this all set up. We'll get our first piece laid out and then we'll try this out. So I did get this all hooked up to my computer and I did download the software that they gave me to use. And in order to update the firmware, you kind of have to download their software first. So I did do that. But after that, I ran the updates. It was super simple. And then I hooked it up to Lightburn. So now we're ready to go to test this out. And upon turning it on, I can just click on home and you can see that it's got a home to the top left. And as you can tell, I don't have a spoil board underneath, but I did place a piece of aluminum, which you can see in this outline underneath the honeycomb bed. So I'll go ahead and I'm just going to do a scrap piece from something that I've used in a previous video. So I'll go ahead and I'll try this out. We'll just do a quick engraving and we'll see how that works. And then we'll get into cutting and, and go from there. So one thing about getting this laser focused is this isn't the easiest and there's really not any good directions on how to focus this. 
But I did find that if I keep this flush to the top of like where the bracket is, and I use this piece of wood, if I place this right on top and I lower this down to where it touches, that should be about the correct height of where I want this in order to have it the best focus. And this is roughly just over 14 millimeters. So to me, that was where I found that the, the height would be the best. So let's run a test. Let's run this engraving. And I'm just going to do my channel name on this piece of scrap wood. And we'll see how this turns out. So I'll go ahead and I'll click frame. And I am going to run this at a speed of, let's go with 3000. And I'm just going to run this at 40% power. And we'll click OK, click start. So as you can see, when this finished, it does come down to the bottom left instead of going back home to the top left. So we'll take a look at that. It is a nice fine line, so I think the focus to me is pretty much spot on. Now I can adjust the speed and the power settings and maybe make it a little darker or maybe a little bit crisper, but for me, I'm happy with that. So they say this will cut up to 18 millimeters. Now, I don't know if that is the case, and I don't have any wood that is 18 millimeters thick, but I'm going to test out this uh, 12 and a half mil piece of wood that I have, and we'll try a little cut, and we'll see if we can cut this out. And I'll run this at 100 millimeters per minute at 100% power. So I'll get this all framed up and I'll go ahead and I'll click start. So I'll send that back to the home position just to get that out of the way. And we'll take a look and see if this actually did cut through. And it came pretty close, but not 100%. So maybe I can adjust this focus a little bit and we'll try that and we'll do that one more time and see if we can get that to cut out at 100 millimeters per minute at 100% power. And as you can see, this does produce quite a bit of smoke, so I actually do have my window open, so it actually is going out. So let's take a look. And again, that still didn't make it all the way through. It's right on the edge. And I think if I probably slow this down to 50 millimeters per minute, it probably will cut that out. So I guess I can give that a try. Let's find out. So again, that still didn't cut it through. It actually went farther, but for whatever reason, it didn't slice that way. So let's see what I actually need to do to get this to cut. So maybe I'll just try doing two passes at 100 millimeters per minute and we'll see if that does the job. All right, so that was two passes and yeah, that did, that did cut it out. So two passes at 100 millimeters per minute at 100% power. That did manage to cut out this wood that is just over 12 mil. So will it cut 18 mil plywood? Probably, but you might need a couple passes. So since I do have this all set up in this nice large bed here, I might as well go ahead and engrave something bigger to actually utilize this full size. So I'm going to grab a piece of wood that is relatively good size and let's engrave something on that and let's see how that turns out. All right, so I finished this large 
Golden Knights emblem that I did on this wood, and I think that came out absolutely fantastic. As you can see, there's hardly any charring along the edges at all, and even on the wood itself, that was cut. You really can't see any at all, so definitely worked out great. You can see underneath where it cut it out. But yeah, if you're doing large pieces, I think this works really, really well. So I'll go over a few things that I like and dislike about this machine. And first, I'm going to start with the things that I dislike. And the number one thing, it would have to be putting this together. And now this instruction manual, as I showed before, it's absolutely, to me, useless. It really doesn't show how to put anything together. There's just a few pictures and it just shows, oh, put a screw here, but it doesn't say which screw. It doesn't really go into detail on how to do it. And then it just goes into more or less adjusting focus and you can go to their wiki page and that still doesn't really help that much. So to me, putting this together was the biggest flaw. It did take a while. Some of the holes didn't line up like for the drag chain that this one I didn't even use, which in theory, it's not really necessary unless you are building an enclosure and you do have a spoil board underneath. I think they could have made this a lot easier to put together straight from out of the box. I think some of these pieces, the rail and back and some other parts could have been already pre-assembled, which would have made things a lot easier. And considering when I was putting this together, I actually had to snip the wires that were attached just in order to, to run the wires through the drag chain. So to me, it's they shouldn't even ever have attached them in the first place, or they should have assembled the other parts that were needed together. So you wouldn't have to do that. I also think this could be a little bit higher. This does sit relatively low to the table. And I think if it was just raised an inch or two a little bit higher, that would just make it a little bit easier to place things underneath. So that's really the only problem I see with this machine at all. Other than that, I think this machine works great. So let's go into a few things that I really do like about this machine. So first of all, overall, as you can see, is the size. This is really large and probably the biggest one that I've used so far for a diode laser. And I mean, at 810 by 460, this gives you a really large amount of working area to go with. And this is actually extendable to 810 by like 1060, I believe. So you can make this even bigger and they do sell that extension kit with it. I think the laser itself performs really well. It was able to engrave and cut large images very, very easily. This didn't take long at all. I did have a little bit of an issue cutting out the wood that was a little bit thicker. But once I kind of dialed down the settings, I was able to get it to cut with two passes. And I'm sure if I adjust the focus correctly and change a few other things and under perfect scenario, sure, I could probably get this to cut with one pass just fine if I adjust everything properly. But that's all more trial and error than anything. So yeah, I don't really think it's a flaw in the machine. And I think it, it does cut overall really well. I also really like that it does come with all the add-ons you are going to need in case you're going to build an enclosure box and you want that emergency cutoff switch and you need the relay or anything for the air assist. It comes with all the extra tools you're going to need, the extension kits if you need more belts. And if you need to mount it to the table, to the spoil board underneath, that's what these brackets are for. So you can and obviously the air assist hose, if you do have that built in and construct it that way. I mean, I just used my own air assist, so I really didn't have that problem and really didn't need to bother with it. So for me, it wasn't an issue, but for other people, sure, this is upgradable and there is a lot more you can do with this that they provide. So that's definitely, definitely a plus. I do really like the honeycomb bed that is underneath and it did come with these magnets just to be able to hold down your pieces. 
It doesn't really work on a thicker piece of wood. It just doesn't hold it very sturdy, but the magnets aren't the strongest. So if you were doing thinner wood, yeah, this would hold it down just fine. So another thing I really like about this machine is that it is extremely lightweight. They say, I think in the manual that this only weighs 206 grams and I believe it. This thing doesn't weigh anything at all. I think the heaviest part is the honeycomb bed and that probably weighs three or four times as much as this. This is made out of all aluminum pieces. So yeah, this really doesn't weigh anything at all. So it's easy to move. So overall, is this worth it? Maybe, I mean, this comes at a price point of about $599. I think it's a little high for this machine. However, you are getting a very large work area and it includes all the extra pieces you are going to need if you're going to upgrade it. So I think that's a pretty good deal. I think it could be a little bit cheaper, but for what you're getting, I, I, you really can't go wrong and you do get a really large work area. It works great. It cuts and engraves just fine as you saw. So if I didn't have such a headache putting this together, I think the 599 would be fine. But because of that headache involved with putting this together, that would kind of steer me away a little bit. Well, that's it for this video, guys. If you got any questions, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.